السلام عليكم السلام السلام Last night, I remember, I saw I sit with some people, but I don't know, just why she told me, <laughs> like in Halaq. Yes. Uh -huh. And? And uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Masha, good. They accept you. I'm not thinking last night. I'm just happy after I left. For you. That's it. Me too, I was so. No, I was so nice last night. You said that many for 21 years? Never had a night like this. this night. Something's wrong. Um. Allah is inviting. <laughs> but how many they are responding? Allah is inviting. Tajuma. <coughs> Allah is inviting. But how many they are returning? How many they are saying Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Be of Allah to be Rabbiku. Am I not your Lord? Allah to be Rabbiku. We say, Qalu Bala. Yes, we are. Allah did not ask us one time, only of that time. He's asking us from that time until today. Allah is always asking us. So many times every day, Am I not your Lord? Allah is calling to us. We think we're calling to Allah. Allah is calling to us. We think we are remembering Allah. Allah is remembering us. So on the day of Allah to be Rabbikum, we say, yes, you are our Lord. And we love you and we accept you. Not with our own. If we are Ahlita Sauf, we know. It is not because of us that we answer, but because
because of Prophet Ali said to Salam and the Mashai. Sahabi Kiram, they are pulling us and they're telling us, say this word. <coughs> Making the sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. All of creation, the Bani Adam. Like how we are praying. Twice, we're making sujud. First time, everyone making the sujud. Not everyone. Those who are making the sujud first time, they are the believers. There are some who didn't make the sujud. They only make the sujud after that. Then they make sujud. Second. Then there are some, after they make the sujud, they get up. Then they see, then they make another sujud. So different levels of believers. Okay, different levels. From that time it was already decided. But Allah in His mercy is also sending prophets, and sending books, and sending His friends, those inheritors of the prophets. What is Ulamiyah? To remind us, remind us, remember that day of promises, you and I were there, everyone was there, why we not remember? The zikrullah is supposed to make us to remember, to go back, not just this life, but the life when we were in our mother's belly, the life before we were sent to this world, the life in the day of Allah to be who was there, we were close to each other. We were close to each other that time, that's why we are close to each other now. Who was there? And those ones, the Mashaikhs, Mashaikh Afandi, they are properly trained. They know who is in front of them and who is behind them. Who is on their right, who is on their left. But we forgot. We sent it to this world, we have forgotten. <coughs> the prophets and the saints, they've been sent here to make us, to remind us. But that is the reality. That's exactly what happened. So Allah is always saying, Allah stubi rabbi. Allah stubi rabbi. Allah stubi rabbi. We have to say, Father, Bala, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And how we live our lives every day is an answer to that question. Allah has direct communication with us. Definitely. He's closer to us than our jugular vein. But we are very far away from Him. He is close to us, but we are very far away from Him. Who says we are close to Him? We are not even close to our governor. We are not even close to our mayor. You cannot just knock on the door of the president and say that I want to speak to you. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah hears, of course Allah hears. But for you to be in His divine presence, is something else. That's a time when we have to be close to the awliya Allah, to the friends of Allah, and they are going to say, we send you invitation, do you remember? You don't remember. We send it to you again and again. Now you are answering the invitation and you are coming, and this is what you have to do. Because now, what is standing in front of us to make us to forget our Lord, ourselves. What is that self? That is that self that is called the ego. Nafs. Two inside. Not the way people are imagining. One angel here, one devil here fighting and you're stuck in the middle. No, that's Disney morality. Like Disneyland. No? That's cartoon kind of spirituality. It is not. In Islam, we have two angels, not two, one angel, one devil. We have two angels. Kiraman and Katibin. One is recording all the good deeds, one is recording all the bad deeds. But understand the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angel on the right is the head. The angel on the left has to listen to the angel on the right. Why the woman is not here to listen to something? The downstairs busy? No, stay, stay, I'll stand, stay. They were waiting, I know they were waiting. We should call them. Also. So, the angel on the right is in charge of the angel on the left. 
understand the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angel on the left, if he sees something wrong, he has to ask permission from the angel on the right to say, this one did something wrong, can I write it? The angel on the right says, no, wait, 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 four hours. If he doesn't say astaghfirullah, then write it down. And the punishment is one time. If he says, don't record it. The angel on the right, if we make intention, just a niyat, that we're going to do something right, maybe we don't do it, maybe we cannot do it, but just to make the intention, they're going to write down as a sawab, as a blessing as a reward, and they put it from 1 to 7 to 70 to 70,000. And if you make the action of that good, I'm going to give you more reward. Immediately, he doesn't have to wait. But the angel on the left, to write the wrong deeds, he has to wait. So this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you understand a little bit, you start thinking a little bit, that time, yes. Your prayers is going to have a taste. It's not just a ritual going up and down, but you know why you're doing it, who you're doing it to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us that question. Am I not your Lord? Let's do it up. <coughs> and if we say yes you are you're making the zikr and you say yes you are yes you are you are always close to me Ya and very far away from me more we have that relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you become close to Allah and when you become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is saying in the sacred tradition in the hadith of Qudsi I will become his tongue that he speaks. I will become his eyes that he sees. I will become his ears that he hears. I will become his hands that he touches, his feet that he walks. It doesn't mean now that we're going to become Allah. Hasha is stuff. It doesn't mean now that Allah is going to be. No, Allah is saying now he's going to speak only with Haq. Haq is one of my names. Allah, Janabul Haq. So he's going to speak with Haq. He's going to see with Haq. He's going to do everything according to my will, the will of Allah. That time, that one has Islam. It's not, that one is not just doing it, putting Islam into a lifestyle that is not Islam. Is there an Islamic lifestyle? Yes, there is. You'll be surprised. 1300 years, Muslims from Russia to Africa, from China to Eastern Europe, and almost all of Southeast Asia, Muslims have an identity that is completely distinct and different from non-Muslims, in every way. They did. They didn't have it just for one year, two years, 10, 20 years, for 1,300 years. It's very clear. Muslims dress like this. Non-Muslims dress like this. Muslims eat like this. Non-Muslims eat like that. What else? Muslim music is like this. Non-Muslim music is like that. What else we have? Muslim architecture is like this. Non-Muslim architecture is like that. Muslim medicine is like this. Non-Muslim medicine is like that. Muslim law is like this. Non-Muslim law is like that. <coughs> is there interchange? Of course there is. Because Islam is saying, go and seek knowledge. Prophet Isaac is saying, go seek knowledge even if you have to go to China. But there is a deeper meaning to that. It's not just meaning the dunya, the zahir knowledge. But it's talking about ilm. The knowledge, the highest knowledge, which is the knowledge of Allah. Even if you have to go to the furthest place, you're going to go. So, there is exchange, but there is always Islam, traditions of the Prophet that act as a filter. 
all these different ideas coming, we're getting knowledge from so many different places, but there is a filter. <coughs> that filter is going to take the good, all the other things they're going to throw. Who is providing this filter? Khalifa, alims and ulamas, awliyaullah, scholars and saints, those who have knowledge, not media, not uh, multinational corporations, not economists, not financiers, not politicians, not no. Hilafat and the scholars and the saints, those who have real knowledge, they are the filters. Not common people like you and me. Not people who read books and say, well, I can filter, I can make tafsir, I can decide. No, you cannot. If Allah wants you to do that, He will not send prophets. He'll just send a message to everyone. He will not send book to one prophet. He's going to send book to everyone. So everyone take book and read as they like. They're going to interpret as they like. But there is a hadith prophet says, don't do that. You do that, you're going to belong to hellfire. You cannot make your own tafsir, no matter how much you know. Can anyone make their own interpretation of the state law? Can anyone make interpretation of hospital policies. Can anyone make their own interpretation of the traffic lights laws? No, you have to go. Who decides? Someone who is qualified, who has the knowledge, is going to decide and you have to listen. That is the law. You don't want to listen, go to another place. But Islamic law, now, we're talking about Quran and Hadith, you are saying anyone can interpret, can make tafsir as they like. So you find new kinds of Islam coming up. Very strange kinds of Islam is coming up. Never before you hear before. Hmm? Biggest thing that they say, Muslims, <laughs> you must not live an Islamic lifestyle. Don't look like Muslims. Don't think like Muslims. Don't eat like Muslims, don't. You must assimilate. <coughs> don't have the lifestyle, remove lifestyles from Islam. Assimilate. That time you can pull people to Islam. MashaAllah. It's never happened. If people uh, come to Islam, it's because of Islam. Because of the Holy Prophet, let's say, it's because of Azan. It is because of Sunnah. It is because of beliefs that are completely different from what they raised in. That's why they come to Islam. People from the West, especially, they come into Islam because they're sick and tired of their lifestyle, isn't it? Of their ideas, of their concepts. That's why they come to Islam. And they say, this is haq. They didn't come to Islam to say that this is exactly what I believe in. They didn't come to Islam saying, all these issues, all these philosophies that I grew up with, that I'm sick and tired of, I find in Islam, that's why I became a Muslim. No, they say this is clear, this is pure. So they come there. But new disease coming, uh, take the lifestyle out of Islam. Now the Muslims become like Christian Muslims. There is nothing in their lifestyle that is showing that it is Islamic. To sit like this, it is Islamic. To sit on the floor, or to put something above the belly button, when you're eating, you automatically have to carry that. The reason is because the food it is sacred, right? it's holy. Food is holy. You don't put the food under your feet, you put it above. That's why we have Quranic Karim. Also, we don't put the Quranic Karim here, but we see so many. You know how it is, especially the Arabs. Huh? They know language, but it's their tongue. They didn't enter into their heart. And they take the mushaf and they put it here, isn't it? They stretch out their feet like this and they're reading Quran and Karim like this, stretching. So there is no adab. There is no adab, there is no Islam. What kind of blessings are you going to get with that? It is completely wrong. <coughs> so now it is lifestyle. It is lifestyle. But they say, no, you have to change your lifestyle to become better Muslims. We can understand if you say, well, we are working, 
We are going to school. This is our situation. We cannot, we want to, but we cannot do all the time. We say that's okay. You got the right idea. Inshallah, one day it will. Or if you find different majlis, different situations, then be more Muslim. Hmm? But those ones who say that, no, this is not necessary. Why are you wearing a turban? Our brothers have gone to different majlis. And they're wearing turban. And the Muslims are saying, what is this? Started laughing at them. It's normal, but it is very bad. Because now you're laughing at what Holy Prophet they said to us, salam, and how 124,000 prophets that they are wearing is not good. So, inshallah, Rahman, Islam, like we said, it is a lifestyle. Who is going to teach us its lifestyle first? Holy Prophet, they said to us, salam. It's not going to stop there. Prophet is saying, follow this, my sunnats and the sunnats of my companions, of my sahabis. Meaning, you cannot just say, I'm looking at Prophet, I'm not looking at all the other ones. So I'm going to interpret as what the Prophet is doing. So many people are saying that, they're doing that too. But you have to follow now the companions and the tabi'in, and the tabi'in, tabi'in continuing. The one that is in front of you. So, if we have the lifestyle now, uh, what happens now? The way that you sit, then you're going to say, oh, if I sit like this, Prophet I said to us, Salam is also sitting like this. There is a blessing and there is a reward. There is light and there is sawab. Prophet I said to us, Salam is drinking water like this. I'm going to drink it like that. Now, what happens now? You start to do exactly what Prophet did. What happens then? You start to imitate. What happens with that imitation? Love is going to enter into your heart. <coughs> and you're going to become close to that. And that's a time when you start picking up on so many things and you become a light for other people to look at and to come close to. And that is the job. It is the job, job of those ones who are close. So, we are not surprised. It is not good. <coughs> we are not. If the men's, they can move a little bit. This is another Islamic thing that we are doing. The men's and the women's, they have to be separate. This is divine law. But it doesn't mean now we're going to put our women's in the basement. No, it doesn't mean that. They're going to be there, they're going to listen, but it has to be a separation. The men and the women, they cannot be Islamically, they're mahram to be together. There's a different secret to that, and there's a different um, blessing that comes down. The energy, when the males, they are together, completely different from the women that they are together. So, Inshallah, the traditions and the lifestyles of Muslims that we have maintained for 1,500 <coughs> years, it must come back because Islam and the Muslims, they're not rising when they leave the lifestyle of the Prophet, they fall back. When they hold strongly to the prophetic sunnah, to the lifestyle, that's the time the whole world will start to take us seriously. That's the time when we start giving the light of the Holy Prophet they said, to us salam to the whole world. And the world is in darkness until they have some of this light. Inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Remember me and I will remember you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Remember me. And I will remember you. And don't think that when we say Allah, 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 it is the same as Allah calling out your name. Can we imagine that? Allah is making zikr of us? It's tough. Who are we? Like one saying to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi. 
الله الرحمن الرحیم ودود and we love you I love you because you are that and you are my creator I understand that because it is impossible for us not to love you but what I don't understand is why you love us why you create us so that is understanding now why Allah created us is creating us because of the love that he has for the Prophet remember me and I will remember you and Allah is saying if you remember me alone I will remember you alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying if you remember me in a group I will remember you in a group that is more exalted that is higher that is superior than the group that meaning he's going to remember you he's going to remember us in the company of angels so it is a high honor for us number one to have been created man and we've not created a donkey an animal it is an honor because we have been created as one of the Bani Adam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying bani Adam. we have honored the children of Adam We have honored the children of Adam. Allah is not saying we have honored angels. He didn't say that in the Quran. He honored the children of Adam. Us. What kind of honor now he has given to the Ummah Muhammad The highest honor that Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam, 124,000 prophets, they say, Ya Rabbi, take this prophethood away from us, this high honor that you've given us. Take it away in exchange. We just want to be one of the regular, normal, average member of the Ummah of your most, most beloved one because we understand the blessings that they are going to get in the day of judgment. So how much thanks we have to give now? that Prophet for making us. Mawlid, it is important because Mawlid gathered people to remind them this. Mawlid is not just to gather people to sing nuts. It's okay. It's good. Although I don't really like it when you pay nuts, walas, so much money. They come and they sing too much. It happens. Mawlid, Urs, Mawlid is not just to gather in the tombs and then to make nuts and kawalis on and on and on and you're not praying. No, we have to do all those obligations. They are promoting that kind of Sufism also. Understand there is a hidden agenda behind it. So that people say, ah, that's how it is, all this kind of things is bad. I'd rather go and become a Wahhabi. <laughs> you say, at least they're not crazy like these ones. But that is wrong too. What kind of faith are you going to have now as a Wahhabi when day and night they're planning to destroy the tomb of the Prophet? They already made fatwas, isn't it? They say we have to dig up, we have to explode, destroy that green dome. Because people are going there to make prayers, asking Prophet to make dua for them, and it is shirk. They have already destroyed so many things. What is that? Where is that coming from? How you can hate that prophet? So you must come from a lineage of people who have always hated prophets. You must be. When you dig and you see that, yes, they come from a lineage that hate prophets. It cannot be impossible if you are a real one to hate that Rahmat so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Am I not your Lord? And we did on the day of promises. We made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We promised to Allah, Yes, you are our Lord. We will ask only from you. And we love you. And Allah then sent us to this world to test us. You see, we remember. We were all there, you and me. Everyone from the day of Creation up till Judgment Day, we were all there. And we addressed to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. But we have forgotten that. Slowly, 
following under the guidance of a murshid, we will remember that. And when you remember, then you understand that this world, yes, yeah, this world is really asfal as the lowest of the low. This world is the lowest of the low. We have been created in what? Ah, sani Man has been created in the most perfect form. Our sunny taqwim is reserved again only for man, not for angels, not for animals, not for anything else except for man. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man for a big role, for a big mission that, yes, not even the angels they understand. The angels are saying, Ya Rabbi, you created man, they are going to make confusion, they're going to make fitna, they're going to make bloodshed. They're not, angels are not understanding the secret that Allah has put inside man inside the insan, inside the Bani Adam. Angels <coughs> have not discovered that. Hmm? That's why Shaitan, he was not an angel, but he worshipped so much, he raised himself from, the, uh, from this world, this world, this planet, this dunya, up to the paradises. Hmm? And he was teaching the angels. He was teaching the angels. But he could not figure us out too. He's looking at Adam Alaysam living there, he's touching, he's <coughs> knocking into this an empty piece of clay. He entered. He entered through the mouth, circling around everywhere. Huh? Coming out, coming out through the other. Coming out through the other part. He says there's nothing there. That's why Hadith Sharif also, Shaitan is circling in the veins of man. Because he did. And he's telling the uh, angels, no, oh, there is nothing there. He could not discover that secret. He could not discover that rope. He did not he could not discover that which Allah in one holy breath, with that holy breath he has given to Adam alayhi salam. We are created in Ahsani Taqwin, in the most perfect creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man, created Adam alayhi salam with his divine hands. Not like these hands. Not like these hands, but with divine hands. And he took time to create Adam alayhi salam. He took time to create everything else. Allah is saying, kun fayakun. But Adam alayhi salam, he did not say kun fayakun created Adam alayhi salam. Never before he had done that, never again. Only one, Adam alayhi salam, the father of mankind. And who is in Adam alayhi salam? All of the seeds of humanity. We were inside of Adam alayhi salam. But Adam alayhi salam, when he was created and when he was put into the Jannat, the Jannat had no taste too. Jannat had no taste and Allah understood his creation and took from his uh, weakest rib bone, took it out and he created the woman to be a companion to Adam alayhi salam. That time the paradise became a paradise. So, we are created in Ahsani Taqwin, in the most perfect form. And we're sent down to this Asfala Safili, to this lowest of the low, this dunya. We must understand this dunya, this Asfala Safili. If you are interested in your spirit, if you have faith, how many they are looking at this world like it is Asfala Safili? How many looking at this world that is the lowest of the low? How many looking at this world like it is an enemy? How many looking at this world like it is a dunya? Here, yeah, of course, now we are talking about a higher level of spirituality. This is a higher education. This is a higher knowledge. Are we saying, oh, so many people, they have lazy thinking. Oh, you're saying that we shouldn't work, we should all live in caves and everything? I said, yeah, you should. No. If you do that with perfect faith, then Allah is going to send sustenance to you, definitely. But who is able to do that? Not. 
except for certain selected people. Did they do that? Did the prophets do that from time to time? Of course they did. Believers do that from time to time? Yes. Awliyaullah, they do, did they do that? Yes, they do. They all enter into seclusion. At least for 40 days, limited food they're getting. Now, what happens in that situation? They're just making the zikr of Allah, remembering Allah, giving salawat. Now that time, they are training their body that belongs to us, Fala Safilin, to be their slave and to take the spirit for the spirit now to control the body instead of the body controlling the spirit. Now the spirit is trapped inside the body. But when you're in that kind of condition, the spirit is outside and the body is inside. And that's the time when you're making the zikr and you are training your body, training your ego. What happens that time? They remove the veils. This world, it is an enemy. This world is false. This world, it is a confusion. Allah is saying this in the Quran al-Karim. So that time what happens? You understand the falseness of this world and you start witnessing the reality of Ahir. Witnessing. Shahid. Witnessing the reality of Ahirat, of the other worlds, of paradise, of hellfire. We were all from paradise. We're all going to return. Paradise is our original home, not this dunya. We're not created for this dunya. We're created for paradise. Adam salam was not created for this dunya. He was created for paradise. What happened? Who was in this dunya? Azazil was in this dunya. He was not known as shaitan. He was coming from creatures made from fire. Angels, they're created from light. He was living here in this world. And those ones, they're still living here. There is a knowledge that we have to know to a point. We're not going to enter and say we need to know their worlds. That is all unnecessary. You put a cross to them. Because now there's no permission for that. But we have to know, for instance, this is night time. Night time is not the time for man. It is a time for them. Night time, the nightlife will destroy you. Science already knows that if you start living your life, having a nightlife, it destroys your health. Because now the night, the way that the body functions, the sun goes down, it slows down. Your body slows down. You need to slow down. If you work against the rhythm of your, uh, the nature, how you have been created, you're going to suffer a lot. And this machine, this machine, Allah has created it perfectly too. Instead of lasting a hundred years, because you're using it wrongly, going to wrong places at wrong times, you cut it into half, 50 years. But it's meant to live for a long time. Now it is your fault. So night time is for them, it is not for us. They are still here. And... When Azazil was here, he was worshipping to Allah so much. He was not shaitan that time. He was worshipping. He was worshipping everywhere. No one except for the prophets, no one from the beginning of time until the end, you collect all their worshipping, you can match to the worship of shaitan. Every spot on earth is making sajda, making sujood. That Shai Nakshivani is saying, if I can only find one handful of dust on this world that Shaitan did not make such there too, I was going to bring all of the sons of Adam to bring them there, to put in, the, in that area so that they are protected from Shaitan. But he couldn't find. He was worshipping so much that he started elevating. Yes, worship will make you to elevate. He started elevating until he reached to the paradises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let anyone who puts discipline, who puts work, who puts effort, unrewarded. Every time you put an effort, you're going to be rewarded. You put an effort into something that is haram, you're going to be rewarded. If you're a good thief, 
you're going to get what you're looking for. So, as Azil that time, he started elevating. He was worshipping so much. And one day when he was in the paradises, this was before Adam alayhi salam was created. But we say, no. Man has a secret that not even the angels understand. And as Azil, shaitan completely doesn't understand. We don't understand. That's why prophets are being sent for us to remember those days and for us to bring out the secret from us. So, Shaitan was up there. He was worshipping everywhere in the paradises. Saints, they're saying, hundreds of thousands of years. In the paradises, every level of paradise, he was worshipping and was rising. Worshipping and rising. And one day he find a calligraphy in the paradise saying, there will be one who is going to disobey Allah. And he got shocked because that time man is not created. And everything was serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he saw that sign, he says, How can this be, Ya Rabbi? That someone is going to disobey him? And he said, Ya Rabbi, give me permission to curse to that one who is going to disobey you. Allah said, permission is given. Curse. He went to Sajjah, he started cursing that one is going to disobey Allah. He is not understanding that that one might be himself. If we have that characteristic of arrogance that is coming from shaitan. Say, it's not me, it's other people. Impossible, I'm going to do it. He starts cursing, cursing for thousands of years to so that one is going to disobey Allah. Then, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, and when Adam alayhi salam, he woke up, then he saw the kalima on the throne of Allah, and beneath the throne, saying, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan asadu wa rasul. La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah and the name of Muhammad is right next to each other, isn't it? He's saying there must be something really special there. He woke when the spirit was put into him and he sneezed. He started sneezing. Hmm? And he started sneezing. When he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah. First word that came out, he said, Alhamdulillah. Even the angels, they were shocked. How can this one know he just been created? Was man only created at that time? Because now it looks as if man is the last one to be created. Isn't it? No. Man is not the last one to be created. Man was the first to be created. But man was the secret that Allah was covering. Until everything else was ready and he put man there. So, Adam is saying, Alhamdulillah, Life came back to him. He sneezed, life was, his spirit was removed and he came back to him. And now they discover that every time you sneeze, your heart stops. We say, Alhamdulillah, he became Adam alayhi salam. He was created to be Khalifatullah. He went to paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Hawana, our mother, to be his companion. Adam alayhi salam was carrying the seeds of all of humanity. He was also carrying the light of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. In him. First he was there on his forehead. He couldn't see it. Every time he was walking in the paradises, he has thousands of angels circling around him, making a tawaf around him, giving salawats. And he's saying, Ya Rabbi, I'm not understanding what, why they are making a tawaf around me. He's saying it's because of that light. He says, I wish to see it, Ya Rabbi. Allah then subhanahu wa ta'ala removed it. He didn't remove it. He brought it down up to his index finger of his right hand. And he saw the light there. He says, that is going to be your grandson and that is going to be my Habib that is going to come in the Ahir Zaman. Nabi of the Ahir Zaman. And that is the reason why we're making Tahir Tashahud. We're making, pointing this Shahadat finger. <coughs> and now they also discover 
Science is very late, of course. Spirituality is further ahead. Now they discover that every time they discover that there is a direct vein from your forefinger directly to your heart. That when you do this, you do activate your heart. Your heart is directly full when you do this. Allah Akbar. Do we need to know all of this? We don't. If we trust and you believe in the Prophet and you're doing it, you're going to get the same benefits. But man, these days you have to convince them so much. But if you discover that these are also some of the benefits and some of the secrets, your faith is going to get stronger too. <coughs> now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Adam alayhi salam, everywhere it is halal for you, but only one is forbidden to you. Don't eat from the forbidden tree. Don't even come close to it. He did that mistake. He did that. We cannot say it's not good manners for us to say also that he did a mistake. He did what he did because he is a Nabi. We cannot even say Adam alayhi salam is sinned as if we don't have sin. He did that action and he was then thrown out from paradise to this world. So this world from the highest then to the lowest. And he continued. He was directly from paradise, but his children, they were born from his world, in this world. <coughs> and when he was sitting with his wife, and sitting with his children, and he's speaking to the children, oh my children, your mother and I, we are not like you. You are not like me or your mother. We are from paradise. You were born here. Because he was the first man and he was also the first prophet teaching. They had so many children, Allah saying, yes, hundred. Some of them they believe in. Some of them they didn't. Some of them they said, Oh father, you got old. You're losing. You went from paradise, you're from here. What? Paradise. We only can believe anything that we touch and smell and hear. <coughs> not something that requires faith. So then what happens? Those ones who are disobedient to him, they start splitting now from the way of Haq, the Batu. And from that up till today it continues. Some who believes and some who does not believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to become believers. Amen. Amen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the shafat of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam make us to return his call. Make us to remember him. Asking for forgiveness and make us to become strong, inshallah. Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to you. And welcome to me. Welcome to Shayna. Any questions anyone has? You, are, you want to say something? Feel free. <coughs>